You're awake, Mr. Pierce. How do you feel? Bad. Did I sleep long? The day is only starting. It's fine. How's our few Dr. Bradley? Who Mr. I tell us. Right, so um what if I just click talk to Bradley or talk to Gordon? Uh did Fuller f I saw dead bodies. Dr. Fuller seems to be leaving a trail of corpses. Not to mention those strange machines, chains, and tools of all kind. Yes. I've been telling you that Fuller uses his patients as guinea pigs. What I saw was more akin to torture than medicine. Do you even hear what you're saying? Dr. Fuller is highly respected. At being a psychopath. It's the truth, Ethan. And I'll prove it to you. I'm listening, Mr. Pierce. Um... Sarah Hawkins was committed, or did Fuller found Riverside? Given the energy he pours into Riverside, I presume it was Fuller's creation. His father's, to be correct. He was a surgeon on board the Scylla. Hmm. He founded the hospital in 1904 with funds from the Hawkins family before he died and his son Thomas Fuller took over. Two families inextricably linked. Most island families are that way. Captain Fitzroy's father was also a seaman aboard the Scylla. Powerful families dominating everything. Yes, and as you could tell, Dr. Fuller is like some crazed emperor. He wouldn't be happy if he knew we were snooping around. I know the risks. I don't fear him. Do you wish to know anything else? Sarah Hawkins was committed. I found a file bearing Sarah Hawkins' name in the Institute's basement. It makes sense. A powerful family like the Hawkins had the means to hide such a disgrace. But everyone knows the Fullers have been taking care of the Hawkins for at least a generation. And all were aware of Mrs. Hawkins' fragility. Perhaps, but no one would allow a psychiatric internment. From what I read in the file, Fuller used her as a subject of his experiments. Francis Sanders and Sarah Hawkins, subjects of Dr. Fuller. Why those two? So that's already a lot more information than I had last time. Talk to Bradley. I can't say you should be dead. It's kind of obvious. You and Dr. Gordon. I heard you talking. Why am I not surprised? <laughs> I get the impression you two don't get along. Intrusive and not very clever. Anyway, let's get back to the business at hand. What I'm sure of now is that the Hawkins case isn't just an accident. And what brings you to that conclusion? The fact that Charles Hawkins survived the fire. I don't understand. Mr. Hawkins was buried. That's what he would have you believe. I have a hard time believing you. <laughs> you were there, Bradley. You even opened fire on him. I'd remember that. Why would he fake his own death? Do you think he covered up his wife's murder? That's possible. It seems hard to swallow. Don't you have anything more concrete, Pierce? It's weird how he's still alive. That's so strange. Memory seems to be failing you. Bradley, what do you remember? I don't understand your question. The night we went into the Hawkins mansion, you don't seem to remember the tunnels and what occurred there. Uh, no memory of going down any tunnel. No, we were in the manor then... Uh, then what? I... Uh, the rest is quite blurry. I don't recall how I came back home. I'm fake. Sure, I could just show him now, though. I went to visit you at the hospital and called on Marie's help to get you released. And you don't remember the events of the tunnel. I don't. Let's talk about something. Pretty simple though. We could just check the rounds he's got. He'll f he fired what three, four? He definitely remember that. Or he definitely know because he's had less. Why did your skirt just move? Cthulhu, what are you doing? Uh, but yeah, he'd have like a few less bullets and presumably an injury. I mean, if that was healed by the occult, then he'd at least. I mean, the occult can't regenerate bullets, I assume. I so. saw people in hoods. They had stolen Mrs. Hawkins' paintings. Who are you talking about? Why would they do such a thing? I don't know, but they were a threat. They've taken over the caves under the mansion. They were performing some kind of ritual. One of the entryways was under Charles Hawkins' office. We suspect Mr. Hawkins of being involved. 
My patients believe the old islanders used to worship primitive sea gods. Could they be the focus of the cult? Am I hearing this right? So you think me gullible? No, not at all. What else did you uncover, Mr. Pierce? <laughs> um, I have flashbacks. What did Okay, and I've asked this before, what or said this before. You, you should believe it. You did. And I said the things to those guys. I, I met a. Of course, he's a pig. What? Uh, Tell. I didn't see. Of what? Sanders. Sarah, this makes. You really think she's involved? Francis Sanders mentioned Mrs. Hawkins just before dying. You know, friend, I guess you can still pay a visit. An art. Yeah, there we go. Iron Sanders. Dinner at the Sanders household. Please spare the widow the tale of her. Li I don't agree. But that truth may be bought. Yeah, about to confront the truth. He's right. But it could drive her mad. Better madness than ignorance. Very well. I'll go to see Francis's widow. Perhaps don't end up in the hospital this time. I'll do my best. So yeah, it's kind of funny that we can't. Let's see if he leaves. Yeah. Right. Um. No, don't have a drink. Jesus. So, uh, the only difference between last time is I didn't drink. I went through that little cellar thing, so obviously I've got extra trauma, lovely. So I've hit every trauma on the way now. Jesus Christ. To be fair, I got- I had like all of them last time anyway. I didn't- this is one that you could have avoided if you, uh, didn't go the electric route, because the only thing is there's- I don't know whether you can see the wire somewhere. But there's one of those, uh, things that you can turn on that way. Uh, so you could avoid this one by not going in that room, but then you don't get the- um, what's it called? There's like a medical tome thing that you can get. And this one as well, which I didn't get last time. Which, obviously these two are bad things, but this is the only one I actually missed from last time anyway. And I do have some skill points, which I'm going to put into psychology, seeing as just failed the psychology test. Er, uh, test. Do I still have my crowbar? No. And I don't think there's anything else in here. But come, I just literally take him down to the tunnels now, see if he remembers. Because the entire way won't collapse, we'll at least have the bookshelf entrance. If I show him how I know exactly how to open that, then presumably he'd know. A little bit of a plot hole, I guess. That and the bullets, but... And is his, like, uniform not all messed up? He was thrown around in that, into, like, a, a mossy, wet cave. A bit strange. I assume they won't talk to me any further, though. The other night's events are still confused in my head. Yeah, you say. You don't say. Let, it... Let us go now and learn the truth about what's happening on this island. Yeah, I think I will. Uh, I think I've pretty much checked everything around here anyway. Especially because I've already been through it once. Alright, let's have a look and see what we can see with Sanders' widow. Maybe I should have trained eloquence a bit. Oh, wow, that looks like a lovely place. Uh, Pierce, Colden, and Bradley decided to team up to solve the Sarah Hawkins case. They have a new trail to follow. Francis Sanders, an art collector and friend of the painter who died right in front of the Pierce. The detective goes to his house in order to speak to his widow about the shambler that the unfortunate man mentioned before he died. What can I do for you, sir? Mrs. Sanders, I'm a private detective. We must talk about your husband and his ties to Sarah Hawkins. Can I come in? You may. <laughs> However, before we go any further, please know that my husband died yesterday. That is precisely what brings me here. Oh, and a familiar well, face. Well, look who's here. <laughs> you know each other. Our paths crossed. Briefly. Very briefly. The brave detective has a talent for sticking his nose into my business. I bump into her every time I'm investigating someone's death. Funny that. It's a small island, detective. My island. It's better that it's you bumping into me. You're investigating Francis' death. Why? Who hired you? I spoke to Francis before he died. His story suggests a link to a case I'm working on. 
At least I'm well, upfront about it. Since this business has got nothing to do with me, I'll be in your husband's office, Irene. We'll carry on later. Very well, Miss Baker. Wonder what that was about. This way, Mr. Pierce. And do make yourself comfortable. It would seem that you have much to tell me. Lovely paintings. Oh, maybe I should have put more points in eloquence. As to when you had the opportunity to talk to my husband. Mm. Yesterday, I met him at the hospital. He spoke to me about Sarah Hawkins. Oh, of course he spoke to you about her. That's all he talked about. Sarah Hawkins and her paintings. Please forgive my tone. The fact is that I have not been allowed to see him since he was interned. Strange. You, on the other hand, a perfect stranger, were able to see him and even talk with him the day he died. How was he? Were you present when he had this attack? What happened? This attack. You must not feel guilty. What happened to your husband is terrible, Mrs. Sanders. But from what I saw, it was inevitable. The man I met yesterday had lost his reason. He suffers no longer, if you would allow me such a platitude. Mm. Of course. Thank you for your kind words. Nobody in that hospital would have deigned to speak them to me. However, it will require more than that to soothe my mind. <laughs> I need to understand. I love my psychology where that came from. How, how could this happen? In a reputed institute. <laughs> And, and right before your eyes, Ill repeat. did you not do anything to help him? Hmm. It's terrible what happened to your husband, but I had nothing to do with it. I was injured, and I came across him in the Sounds hospital. Sounds like I failed that, to be chance. honest. Injured? Well, I'm delighted to see you in such fine fettle, detective. Not everybody enjoyed such a prompt recovery. Yep. Don't like about I suppose that one. Fuller does do miracles now and again. Luck is obviously very kind to you. Oh, it is. I'm tired, Mr. Pierce. I would be grateful if you could tell me what you expect of me, and then leave. Hmm. Don't know that. Should I ask what cat's doing here? May I ask you what Miss Baker is doing here? How do you know her? My business with Miss Baker is private, Mr. Pierce. I assume so. But you do know what kind of business Miss Baker is in, don't you? I am no fool. Please believe that much, at least. Tell me about this dimensional shambler. I deduce that your husband already mentioned this dimensional shambler. <laughs> well, you can't imagine that's all he talked about. It's exhibited at the center of the gallery. No better place for the painting that endowed him with the privilege of such a shameful and miserable end to his life. Hold on. Mm. The Shambler is a painting by Yeah, well, we found that in the Who manifest in we already. To paint such horrors. Take a look for yourself, if you feel so inclined. Uh, I don't know what I want to. At this stage. I suppose I have nothing to lose. But my sanity they in my life. Have paid no heed. For my part, I refuse to set foot in that gallery again. But if you are so eager to see it. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Sanders. I won't be long. I wonder whether she's showing me it out of, you know, wanting to avenge her husband, or whether she's showing me it out of hoping that someone else will suffer his fate so it's not just him. That's not good. I'm fairly sure you can hide in those. Um, regardless, staring at a work of art known as a shambler, as uh, Francis Sanders said, if you know about these things, that's when it affects you, or, you know, words to that effect. Uh, don't look into it, don't try and understand it, because that's what screws you over. I'm wondering whether if I see this painting of the Shambler, I can actually start seeing them in the world then. Well, it's kind of horrific, I guess it's also useful, but seeing as the Shambler ignored me when it was invisible, I assume that's going to bring them straight to me. Reminds me of a certain SCP. Or several. Do you mind if I play? Hmm. Is there a set uh, thing? I 
guess not. Or somewhere else. The day the Shambler came into the Sanders' lives. Oh, that doesn't look good. Wait, oh, they got photographed next to the... <laughs> and it's funny that Sarah Hawkins is the one close enough. They got a photo of him standing triumphantly next to the Shambler painting. That's pretty horrific. And his wife's in the background. I'm not even on his side. Wait. Reconstruction scene. Did she really care for him after all? Dear Madame, I acknowledge your receipt of the letter in which you demand the body of your deceased husband. I am sorry to inform you that I cannot agree to return his body to you at the moment of his interment. You signed a discharge allowing me to dispose of the body as I see fit. I extend my deepest condolences to you. Yeah, good job explaining the broken legs, arms, and neck. Some sort of, some hell of an attack. Ooh, medicine book. A breviary of medicine. Doesn't look very short for being a breviary. Avant-garde theories. Don't mind if I do. Alcohol. Doesn't seem to be too much else here. Is that his wife? Same clothes. See what about the eyes? Not even drawn by uh, Sa uh, by uh, Sarah Hawkins. So that's weird. All right, let's enter this construction scene. So what am I viewing here? Just the when they met up. Spooky. Francis Sanders and Sarah Hawkins were close. Frenzy? Maybe too close. Actually, yeah, let's put my psychology up and eloquence up as well, seeing as I'm doing talking. You guys are lit up, but I can't seem to view you. Investigation. Sanders' accession register. He wrote beside the Shambler. Finally. Finally. What did Sarah Hawkins fear so much that she didn't want to sell the painting? Hmm. Maybe his insanity? A house of artists. A house of artists. A house of artists. <laughs> okay. A house of artists. Can I move out? Nope. And that's to be where the painting was. finally won. Was Sanders aware of his imminent doom? His wife doesn't seem to enjoy it. He did have nice eyes. He didn't want Sanders to have the painting. She must have felt devastated. And his wife? She despises Sarah Hawkins, but it's the painting she truly hates. Why? I think I know why. That's another picture of her. And then there's the painting, which seems to run like oil. And I don't know whether that's... Is that just the dream sequence? No, this looks different. How can I see this so clearly? Part position to check that. Oh god. Why well, ripped his eyes out there and then? The Shambler. I need to see it. That's not good. If imagining it fucked me up, I can't imagine what seeing it's going to be like. She's got so many pictures of her. I saw a magnifying glass there. That's my car. I always leave the goddamn engine on. Nope. Nope again. Let's see what this cylinder has to say once it's inserted in a phonograph. There's Lovecraft himself. Edison Gold Molded Records, Sanders Session 1. An audio recording that Francis Sanders left for his wife Irene. And obviously the picture of Lovecraft is, you know, probably a not to do with it. It's just a, you know, an Easter egg. Hope you don't mind if I touch this. And also listen to, you know, your memory. I made a mistake. I fear that it might be too late for me. Nobody should enter. Except the is that that again? Or is it something else? You know, I've the building coming out of the water. Pay somebody to do it. He's inside my head. I see him. Behind my eyelids. Each time I shut my eyes. I can't take anymore. I can't 
hold him back. Forgive me. That's some pretty good voice acting. Cursed gallery. Those accursed paintings that accursed Sarah. There's quite the uh, emotion in that. <laughs> 